afternoon. Good it's good to see everybody and uh, thank you for coming. <laughs> so um, let's explore what ordinary beauty is. Um, actually, this meeting was inspired from somebody asking, uh, let's have tea uh, online. And uh, then I thought, that's a good idea. But uh, how can we also share uh, this to calm our minds through these difficult times? So please come in. So let's start with doing some flowers. Um, flowers, you know, who disagree that flowers are uh, uh, not beautiful? And uh, actually these flowers I picked uh, in the garden uh, at the Zen Center this morning. And the uh, flowers also uh, immediately get us um, in touch with the nature and uh, the seasons are really important that we are in harmony with the season, that we are aware of uh, what's going on uh, um, outside. So um, I would do a, a, a flower uh, arrangement and actually it's just putting flowers together. Uh, I'm not trying to do Ibibana. Uh, you know, I try to uh, do it natural, which is really difficult. So uh, simple, whatever flowers uh, you have, you can pick, grasses is fine. Actually, the Sinno Ryukyu was a great uh, Japanese tea master, he said uh, it's very difficult to make things look natural, but we should still, still try uh, make the flowers look like the way they grow out in nature. And also uh, flowers, when you do flowers, then there's no aggression, meaning there's you're not in a hurry or try not to be in a hurry. Mm. And so um, non-aggression is actually our basic nature, right? That's why it feels good to do flowers. Flowers has a lot to do with uh, impermanence. Maybe that's why we love the flowers so much, because we know the soon gonna wilt. It's a short lived, and it reminds us our own impermanence. And we should try to, in, amidst being busy, also remember to appreciate and enjoy life in simple ways.
So it's very important, of course, when we have guests, though, we all know that to tidy up the environment, it has to be a calm. And we remember outside and inside is no difference. So to help yourself, uh, you tidy up your environment. Let's go over to the sink. So I will go ahead and uh, wash the teacups. And uh, doing dishes is really mundane. We all know that. But how can the experience not be something we just have to get over with? That it doesn't, uh, that we recognize actually exactly because of this mundane, everyday quality, that's the way we can appreciate it. And how we can do that is like being present, you know, do what is right in front of us. So when you wash the cups, you know, you feel the water, the coolness of the water, you feel the shape of the cup. You let go of all your thoughts, all your busy, your busy mind. You notice you're standing on the floor, you're present, and all you need to do is just doing the dishes. It's always returning to the sensory experience, the, the, the feeling of the cloth and holding something, you know. Because when you are there, then the thing themselves, they're also there for you. So there's a presence, there's a relationship you have uh, with your surrounding. So you can set up over here. I bake some, actually these are Danish, uh, almond cookies and uh, we can serve it uh, on a not a plate actually um, I cut some uh, pieces of paper it's a wrapping paper whatever you have uh, in a small square and we can use that as a plate this is a uh, very cute, it had flowers. So we fold it. Okay. You know, whatever you have. I like the recycled paper because it has a down to earth quality. And of course, it always feels good to be resourceful and uh, use everything you have. So, I'm sorry, there's no chopsticks. I'm gonna do fingers. So one at a time.
you know, so you appreciate everything in a way like, a, you know, you put them down, you, you write there. Actually, it's a, it sounds funny, but it's very scary for us to just be there and not know how deep it is when you're putting it down. It has, we do this in Oriyoki, the Buddhist way of uh, eating in temples too. Okay, let's make some tea. So I have some Denmai green tea here. And let's serve Buddha a little bit of tea First, this is a, a very special red glaze that uh, friends of Rinzoen, uh, our home temple in Japan, is a family that has been making this red glaze for generations. I just want to cool off the water a little bit because it's too hot. Okay, let's sit down and have some tea. I hope that you have made yourself a cup of tea at home as well and enjoying it. So here at home, 
with USA and Asia, uh, we try to uh, go very busy like everybody else, try to take time, take a break, no matter what, and have a tea time, a cup of tea. It's a wonderful thing to do with children. You know, them being so much on the screen and uh, to also have this as the learning uh, and part of their life. And of course, I could probably, uh, I could say a lot uh, about uh, around, uh, you know, harmony and how to purify things. And, uh, you know, the four, the, the four elements in, in chi you know, which is the hua, this a harmony, and sai is purity, uh, kai is a respect for things, and thereby yourself, of course, and uh, jaku, which is a tranquility, is very important. The stillness, when you come together, there's no need to talk, you know, just enjoy being quiet together, do something, and then, of course, you can talk. Um, before I take some questions, then uh, what can I say? Oh yeah, about beauty. Why we recognize something is beautiful. And Rosie says this, you know, if you don't have beauty inside, how can you recognize it on so-called outside? So it's like when this uh, a self that, uh, you know, the usual self go a little more in the background, then you discover and, and then of course can help uh, appreciating, right? So that's what we try to remind uh, ourselves over and over. It's easy to, to, to forget and there's many ways to, to remind ourselves throughout the day. Now we're at home so much. So I, I see you on the screen now on the laptop. So if anybody has any question, you can just go ahead and ask. Great, I can't spotlight. May I make a comment? Yes. Who's Thank talking? Yes. I can't. I need to put that gallery. Okay. Susie. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. So very happy to be here. So very grateful. I'm thrilled. I live far I'm sorry, away. I can't see who's talking. Oh, uh, I'm. Uh, my camera is turned off. Uh, I wonder oh, okay. Are you Pam? I'm, I'm sorry? <clears throat> Please go ahead. Okay. <coughs> I, I wanted to say that I am just thrilled. Fireworks, flowers, happiness. I had not been able to get to Santa Rosa because I live far away. And this is a blessing. Please come back. <laughs> yes, let's do this again. Yes, thank you. Please, you know, just any questions if you have one. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll ask one caution. Hi. Okay. This okay, is Ed. Yeah, hi. Yeah, then. So, um, when you offered the uh, 
cup of tea to the Buddha over on your counter. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the one with the red glaze. Right. You just didn't set it down mindfully. You, you turned it first. A little yeah. bit. Quarter turn. Why, why is that? Um, it's because I learned uh, studying the tea ceremony uh, usually uh, is a tea bowl which is a lot larger than this. Uh -huh. uh, it has a front. So in respect for the, the guests you're serving, you always turn the cup two times so the face is now uh, towards the guest. So now when I serve Buddha on the altar, uh, I did the same. And that's something I learned uh, at Nisoto that was really heartwarming. Um, they have something like 27 altars or so, many, and they, they will, uh, for Ida Ten, who's very, especially important deity uh, for the kitchen, and uh, they have the altar uh, quite high, so I had to stand on a stool and kind of balance and make sure it doesn't fall and <laughs> offer the tea the first thing a tensor does come in the kitchen is making a small cup of green tea like you would serve an actual person and uh, uh, and bring that to either ten and offer it up high and then you will turn it like that uh -huh. So each teacup has a, a special face or a... Uh, sometimes, a, actually, uh, uh, the most famous tea bowl uh, is from uh, Korea. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it has no particular picture. And actually, the very, very few that get to actually hold it and see it uh, have said they're very surprised how plain and ordinary looks and uh, maybe exactly for its humble quality, that's why it, it was so prized, actually it's still the most prized people in the world. So then the host decide, you know, if he or she finds that there's a, a something they find the front or, front or something they would like the guests to to enjoy maybe that's more it you know so you kind of like uh, uh, discreetly you know turn it towards them I see thank you um, uh, could you go over those elements again uh, Kashin the uh, um, the the ka, the jaku. Uh, yes, I can try. Okay. So the the hua, uh, w a wa, uh, is harmony, and uh, so um, in the tea room, it's very important. There's uh, uh, obviously this harmony between the the host and the guest. And when the tea is excellent, or the, the whole, remember, it's never one person. It's the whole uh, uh, timing of the, uh, the whole timing, everything comes together, then something magical or rather, maybe rather deep is happening. And that's when the host and, and, the, and the guest is in complete harmony. So you try to show that in everything that's in the tea room or everything, there's many opportunities in your home to kind of create that. Mm. Um, what Sai is mean, like you have order. If you want order in your life, order in your mind, then you have to have order also physically because we, again, remember there's no difference. And then um, Kai is respect. And that's something that, uh, happens when you care for things and or appreciate something then you have respect uh, for it in the sense that you know that this thing uh, that you really uh, 
uh, is dear to you must come from you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that, so respect is like you also respecting this, uh, we call it Buddha nature, that nature within us. So that's how it manifests. That's how you have that relationship. And Jaku, uh, Jokshu, you know, Jokshu Kuang, uh, is a tranquility uh, and this very utter stillness that we might experience in Sars and, you know, and, and all silence it's a uh, it's part of it too but uh, it makes me want to say that uh, anything we do the beauty the reason that we recognize is beauty uh, is because uh, it's actually ourselves we see so-called out there And uh, because of that, so because there's this uh, uh, appreciation and uh, this care, uh, then and think around you, then there's peace. Peace naturally follows that. And uh, it's not something you have to uh, you know uh talk very much about but if you able to somehow enjoy it yourself then somebody will happen to see it you know uh, i hope angel maybe you know uh, uh sees it and then uh maybe remember it's older that certain kind of feeling great thank you this is Annie. Uh, Hi, Annie. Thank you so much. Uh, this was really beautiful. But um, I, I wanted to ask, a lot of us are spending a lot of time on computers. And I, I, I forget that computers are like a material object sometimes in the same way tea is. Um, and I was wondering if you had any thoughts about how, like, where lessons of tea come in and, like, how we are with our computers and our desk space or, like, ways you practice uh, with, like, a computer and, and treat it in, in the same way you would as, like, flowers or tea. Mm. That's a really good question. Um, thank you. I think it has, you know, when you do something, then you do that activity completely. So when you have to sit uh, and, uh, and write in front of the computer or talk to somebody, have a conference, then you are completely there present. And uh, I think it's that uh, being completely there, you know, that has, that's what is important. So when you do the flower, flowers, there's some kind of, uh, you complete it there because you notice there's actually a, a kind of communication. The flower talk to you and say, you know, you know, there's no one way of uh, doing it. And of course, there's not such a thing as ugly or beautiful. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, being able to, uh, uh, to be present and, and not have that, again, that uh, dualistic thing. So that's a computer, that's me in front of the computer. That's the flower, that's me and, uh, and tea here uh, and me. So it's something constantly somehow practice like when, when it's just the doing itself, you know, the, the hopefully the flowers kind of arrange themselves and uh, tea does itself. And when you're in front of the computer, you're just there and doing your writing. Yeah, like thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, 
but then of course there's things that you can help it along so when you sit in front of the computer then you have this like harmony for instance coming in meaning you tidy up your space it's no good to have an orderly mind if things are all over the place and and it's distracting it's messy so you start now you put in a computer then you tidy it up in your environment uh, maybe you get in your body first by go down on the floor and <coughs> wash the floor uh, and you know remembering it's all connected right so uh, organizing your environment is extremely important Wow. I have another question. Susie. Yes. I I'm noticed sorry. that I noticed okay. that you didn't steep the tea very long. Is this a special kind of tea? Uh no, it's just regular again. My uh, and I'm actually not a tea uh connoisseur like and actually, I don't know much about tea, uh, the tea itself. Um, so uh, that's probably a mistake. I didn't steep it, but the nature of me trying not to <laughs> take too long, maybe. So it okay. seems to taste okay. <laughs> yeah, because I, I noticed it. It, it. it was yellow, and I thought, wow, because uh, usually it takes a while for it to, for the water to, to to um, have a color, right. you know, the tea, yeah. yeah. So but I usually thought- Usually oh. I would probably have it sit longer, you know, and you know, if you like it uh, stronger. Uh, Cassian, I have a question. Yes. This is uh, Tim Sun. Um, you talked about uh, respect. Oh, yeah. Um, having respect um, for uh, the cup, you know, respect for all the objects that you work with in, the, in your life, I guess. Um, could you say something about the dignity of it? Yeah, exactly, dignity. Uh, because each thing uh, has, it has its own existence. Like, you know, we are here and we exist, we live our lives, so does all the myriad of things. So if we know that, then, you know, we try to act upon it and remind ourselves it is so. So, uh, it, it, of course, uh, the dignity doesn't come from the object itself. So we don't care whether it's fancy or ugly thing. You know, it's not that kind of beauty we are talking about. We're talking about beauty that's uh, recognized that's within ourselves. So um, there's a lot of rocks behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, those, are, those are river rocks. River rocks. River rocks. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Did you gather all those yourself? Uh, uh no. <laughs> <laughs> it looks impressive. Uh, they, uh, uh, those rocks, uh, they used to be lava rocks. Yeah, it looks like that's uh, because when this uh, little cabin was first built, it was uh, built by my brother in law. Uh, 40 years ago, and uh, wow. probably 20 years ago, in a snowstorm, a, a sugar pine fell through it, and uh, it had to be rebuilt. And when that happened, we, we went to river rock instead of lava rock. Oh. Uh, originally, it was lava rock because it was very close to Mount Lassen. Oh. Um, the, uh, it's uh, uh, still an active volcano. Thank you, Cashin, for today. Yeah.
So thank you everybody for coming and watching and asking your good questions. And it's a, I was a little nervous because I never done this online thing before. So, but I've been really enjoying it. Yeah, it's been really great to see everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Uh, see you again. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, bye Roshi. Thank you bye -bye. for watching. Bye, Dad. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Good to see you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.